Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to Coffee with Council today. Um, we thought we would publish this online at the same time as we're doing it here, but we, nobody sent out a link for it, so we're recording this this morning, and it will be posted online. So if you have any questions, please come to a microphone, the one that's set up there, so that it can be captured on the recording. <clears throat> Um, I'd like to start off by introducing the council members that are present. First of all, I'm Carol Jones. I think I know most everybody in the room here. I'm the council president this year. Becky Reed is here. Uh, she's our vice president. She'll be your president next year. And Dusty is here. Um, Chad Levert is in the middle over there. And I'm not, oh, Betty Bradley's here. Hi, Betty. Um, is that Robert just stepped out? Okay. Is there anybody else that I'm missing? Okay. <laughs> and Lindsay's wandering around out there. Okay. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I have a few slides to present, and then we'll open it up for discussion and questions. And. Um, you may remember um, a communication that went out last fall that there was an anticipated short fund in the short, shortcoming in the general fund of about $38,000. We discovered this as we were looking closely uh, with the 2023 budget preparations. And, um, and a lot of things went into that. There have been some comings and goings with membership for the church. Inflation is driving up costs. The fellowship renovation hall was just kicking off and with a very razor thin contingency plan that was making us all a little nervous. And um, we had dipped into the reserves last year to pay for some of the maintenance that was required. We had four air conditioners go out and thank goodness the school helped us out in covering the costs of some of those replacements. Um, there's several more that are, I'm a retired physical therapist, so we used to call some of our patients fragile elderly. And I think of that with some of the remaining air conditioners in the, um, in the, the building here as being fragile elderly. They are the same age as some of those that we replaced. So we're looking at potentially having some additional expenses with that. So we sent out the email appeal and there was a tremendous response. The staff helped cut the expenses quite a bit. Um, there were some transfers of funds that we, I guess, weren't originally taking into consideration. One of those being um, the school does payroll deductions for insurance for a couple of their employees, or did last year, and that the church was paying that. But that money hadn't been transferred from the school pot to the church pot, so that helped a little bit. And then um, the school increased the monthly contribution that they make to help cover their, um, their overhead costs. And then the congregation really responded tremendously with their giving. And as a result, the year ended with a surplus of $61,000, which I think really should be celebrated. So let's all be joyful about that to turn that around from a deficit of 38,000 to a surplus of 61,000. So the budget committee met again and um, celebrated and recommended what to do with the surplus. Um, this recommendation went to the council and the council approved the recommendation. And so the overage has been distributed as you see up here. Um, <clears throat> since the mortgages for the educational wing and the offices and for the treehouse were paid off out of B2B funds, um, we've been banking $10,000 a year into a reserve fund for a future mortgage. And with the anticipated shortfall, we had not planned to put that, to put that money into that reserve last year but we were able to go ahead and do that with the surplus. So $10,000 went to that reserve mortgage fund. 
<clears throat> the facility repair reserve fund started last year with a mere $7,000, but it was completely depleted with the first air conditioner that broke. So we designated $10,000 for that fund. And then um, the B2B items up there. Um, the B2B funds were used to pay off the mortgages, like I said. And the reason for that was we wanted to save the interest money that we were paying on those loans. The choice medical proceeds remaining after the 10% tithe was designated to pay back those B2B funds. Um, after doing that, there was still a shortfall of $11,050. So in order to make the B2B giving whole, that amount was designated for B2B, B2B payback up there. In addition to that, there had been a variance between the amount of contributions created to Building to Bless in Servant Keeper, which is the system that the church uses to record the giving, and the general ledger. This dated back to before January 1st, 2020. We've had a lot of turnover in staff in the office and financial people keeping the books. Um, I personally was unaware that this had been out there for three years. I don't know who many, how many people actually knew it. But we took this opportunity to adjust that to alleviate this discrepancy. So 6372 of the surplus went toward that. The remainder of the surplus, the 23611, was distributed to the expense reserve fund, bringing that fund balance up to uh, almost 31,000. This fund began 2022 at 11,561, but it was down to 7,000 before we did this. So <clears throat> that's a lot of numbers. There will be a copy available of all the year-end financials in the office as of Wednesday of this coming week. If you want more detail, please contact Peyton and she can get that to you or you can stop by and look at it. Um, <clears throat> so there was some conversation at the point of us distributing the reserve um, as to perhaps we should tithe some of that, give 10% to other opportunities, other missions. And the decision was made not to do that because the appeal that had gone out to the congregation was not for giving to other mission entities. It was to make St. Peter's whole. So um, we are keeping the whole surplus amount and hopefully increasing our reserves so that we will be in a better financial position throughout 2023. Um, January is give, giving is usually a little below budgeted expenses, and that was the case this month. Um, you can see the numbers up there. It is in line with 2022's January giving, which was actually a little less than what we had this year. Um, expenses were also under budget, but we did show a net loss of about $5,900 for January. We anticipate the giving to improve over the next few months. It's traditionally been the trend. Um, but the Budget Committee and the Council are committed to staying on top of the financial performance this year. We don't want any surprises when we start doing next year's budget uh, like we kind of had this year. Um, so we're going to meet quarterly throughout the year and take a look at where we are financially and see if any adjustments need to be made to the budget uh, based on the giving that uh, is received. And we do recognize that this congregation is a really generous group of people and we appreciate the commitment to supporting the ministries and the staff and our facilities here at, at our church. So. Moving on from financials, the council met on February 4th to set goals for this coming year and the focus areas we agreed on are the next batch of slides that I have. Um, the first one, and these are in no particular order, is to review the current communications with a focus on refining, branding, improving content, ensuring that we're using appropriate communication methods. 
Pastor Lisa and Dusty and Chad are taking the lead on this goal. Communication's always been a challenge every organization I've ever been associated with. To deliver a consistent message in multiple ways, to cast a wide net so that the message is received and recognized as coming from St. Peter's. And so it's inspiring and inviting. It's certainly a daunting task and we are working toward doing it better. Um, and so this will be focused within the congregation as well as externally to the community. And we know that you can send things out four or five different ways and people still don't get the message. Uh, I am a believer that communication requires uh, a two-way look at things. We can, if you don't read email or don't read what comes in your mailbox, well, you're not going to get the message regardless. But we're going to try to do better in terms of getting information out to everyone. Um, Pastor Lisa and Dusty, Chad, do you all have any comments about this goal? No? Okay. The next goal was to integrate gratitude into existing church life and identify new opportunities to celebrate and show gratitude for individual and church gifts. David, Martin, who's not here today, Pastor Harold and I are going to focus on this one. There are many unsung heroes in our congregation who perform many acts of kindness within our church and within the community. And we would like to recognize and show some appreciation for all that is done, all that those folks do. So stay tuned on this one. You're going to be seeing some things real soon in terms of recognizing some of the, the, the heroes within our, within our congregation. And the next one is to develop a community profile to begin to identify the services already in place and identify gaps or needs not currently being addressed adequately in our community. We really want to focus on reaching outside of our walls. Uh, the lead team has been working on this. Um, Becky, with close coordination with the lead team, is going to, going to pull this all together with us. Um, there's a lot of agencies providing services. We don't know who they are or how to access them. I know Sandra and I were approached in Walmart one day. A, a woman needed some help and we really were at a loss as to direct her as to where to go in the community. So um, having a list together of current services and identifying gaps will enable us to potentially fill any gaps that are identified and uh, we can support the organizations that are out there a little better. Becky, do you want to say anything about, about that? Yeah, yeah. We're just getting underway with all these goals. The, the retreat was February 4th, so we haven't had much time to work on them yet. Yeah. So um, the lead team is in the process of finalizing, kind of distilling all the focus group information and, and feedback that you and the rest of the congregation has provided, as well as the assessment that we took at the end of last year. And their goal is to have um, kind of a congregational forum during Sunday school, probably at the end of March. We're kind of pinning, pinning down that date. But it's going to be a time to for them to share back to the congregation, this is what we're hearing um, from you and outwards to our community. And then they're going to put forward a few, a handful of ways of, these are ways that we can identify moving forward and living into some of these ways of growing outwardly as a congregation in the next year. And so this group that we'll meet will help kind of pare that down to like one or two that we'll kind of lean into for our lead journey this year. So. The next goal was to curate and capture faith in action stories to share with the congregation and those interested in how God is on the journey with us. Pastor Lisa and Betty are going to lead at this one. Hearing inspirational stories of others helps us to get to know one another, builds a stronger faith community, and helps us to all more easily tell our own stories. So we're looking forward to this. Do you have any no comments? Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's about all the slides I have. Um, I hope this will help you understand what we're going to be focusing on this year and what we've already been doing. And so I will open it up for questions. Did I skip one? Yeah. Oh, go back. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. That one. <laughs>
Okay, so um, Lindsay and Pastor Harold are going to look at our facility use agreement. We really would like to open up our treehouse and our new fellowship hall when it's done to the community to use for different groups. And we are wondering if perhaps the fees associated with that that are required with the facility use agreement um, might be a barrier to that. So we would like to kind of reevaluate that and see what we can do perhaps to make it more available for certain groups that might want to use our facility but may not have the resources to pay for the for the rental of the facility. So that's what that one is about. Any questions? Yes, can you come to the microphone? Or should we bring it to you? Since <laughs> I know how those new knees are. Test, test. I just wanted to mention that um, the Community Resource Center, which is connected to the Helping Center, had at one point in time, when I was on the board of the Helping Center, did have a complete guide of all the services that were available in our community, in, I think in Burnett and Llano counties. And so I would encourage you to get in touch with... Um, um, with them. <laughs> with yeah. Sam and yeah. with uh, um, uh, Paul King and find out what they have available that might be of help to you. That'd be great. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. So <laughs> thank you for that. I had a question, but I have a mic back here, so. Oh, did you have a question? Okay. Never mind. I'll have a mic here. Oh. Um, I'm your new member board member for the Helping Center, and uh, I'm getting to understand more what the Helping Center does. But let me tell you, they're, they're, they're seeing a um, influx of the homeless in this community, mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised, uh, Sam over there, uh, there's, there's a few, few times each month where he helps to pay uh, the PEC electric bill and there's other, other things going on, but Faith, you're right about the Community Resource Center. That is a fantastic place. Mm -hmm. And uh, start, start on March, uh, the first Sunday in March, don't forget your ramen noodles or your water and uh, spaghetti sauce, okay? Okay. <laughs> and the SALT group toured the, the Resource Center and the Helping Center. It's an amazing facility and they do a lot of good work. And I, we know they do more than just the food bank stuff there yeah that's great Olivia what was your question um, it was in regard to the surplus um, was it taken into consideration that the 2023 budget was um, set up to operate on a deficit and like I may not understand how all this works but we did balance the 2023 budget um, eventually it took us a long time to get there it was a very interesting and exasperating process for me personally. Um, but we did manage to budget, to balance the budget. So in the 2023 surplus, or the 2022 surplus needed to be um, accounted for in 2022, according to Lori. She's not here today, but we couldn't just roll that surplus over into 2023. Yeah, like um, I said, I don't really understand how methods. the budgets work, so. Yeah. But that yeah. makes sense. Okay. So. Thank you. The, uh, yeah. But so the 2023 budget will be re-looked at. Yes. Given that, because we actually did have a transfer of funds coming from 22 into 23 to cover what deficit we were expecting from this year. It, or there were money in 23 that was to make up for some of the loss in, in 22. So um, yeah, we had to get through this surplus and getting that out, but there will be a re-look at 23. And uh, we were going to do that at the end of the first quarter, so. which will ease up some of the tightness of the 23 budget, we're hopeful. 
I, I am speaking from the planet other. <laughs> I have been evaluated as being negative in some of my conversation about my family as well as yours, St. Peter's. I have to say again though that I, when you were talking about making St. Peter's whole and that the congregation had not been asked to contribute their funds to any place but St. Peter's, I was thinking of what Jesus said when the guy said, I'll follow you, Jesus, but I've got to go bury my father. I'll follow you, Jesus, but I've got to go do this first. I'll follow you, Jesus, but I've got to do that first. And I think, for me, that's what I hear we're doing. When I was looking at that surplus and I was saying, oh, thank you, Lord. And I was thinking, is there any way that we could make a notation in the budget that 10% of this surplus, when it's time for us to decide what percentage we're going to contribute next year in our budget, that 6000 would also already be a part of that. I cannot tell you how sad I am when I hear us first, us first, us first. And, and I appreciate the goals that you've set for others. But it's, it seems so upside down to me. I think that we're here because we believe what the gospel says. And I believe that the gospel says you give your tithe first. And so I'm praying this year a lot that we can do that in our budget next year and trust mm -hmm. that God will give us what else we need. That's my sermon for today. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. There are a number of other initiatives besides these that were up on the slides that we would like to take a look at this year and making a commitment to what that tithing amount is and a, a goal for this congregation. You know, 10% is the number that, that we always hear um, and, and working toward that amount over the next few years. We also want to look at a multi-year budget process so we're not just going from year to year to year. Um, so there's work to be done in that regard, and we, we know that. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, I think, um, so, so one of the things, and, and you just mentioned it, one of the things we're looking at is we, we tend to budget from year to year to year, uh, one at a time. And so one of the things we're going to take, actually two, two things we're taking on this year. One is that we'll look toward a three-year budget so that we are kind of living into where the future is. You can't go from where we were to giving 10% tomorrow. It just, it, it's not feasible. Um, it's, it's truly not feasible for the congregation to do that. Um, what we are also gonna be doing as well is performing a narrative budget that explains that all the giving that this congregation does does not show up only in dollars and cents. Um, so we're gonna show where the dollars are being spent, the, the dollars that we spend in the pastors, the dollars that we spend in the, in the administration of the church, it's all outward focused. And so to spend those dollars, those dollars are actually going out into the community and helping this community in so many different ways. Uh, so you'll, you'll see those two things. You'll see a three-year budget that's kind of living in more tithing, and you'll see a narrative budget that shows that we're a congregation that gives immensely. Uh, even though it's not always showed up in dollars and cents. Thank you, Dusty. I don't know how we're doing on time. I did not bring a timepiece up here. I see choir members gathering in the North Axis. Ten minutes? Ten minutes? Twelve. Twelve minutes. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? First of all, I just wanted to add one more potential resource uh, talking about the, the helping center. There's also the Hill Country Crisis Network, 
with Kevin Nauman and his group, so there may be some, some resources there as well. And then also I just wanted to express the gratitude that I have for everybody who is here and for everybody who is serving on council. It's a lot of work, a lot of stuff to go through, but I just wanted to give a rousing round of applause <laughs> for everybody serving on council. Thank you very much. Says the past president. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Anyone else? Okay, that's all I have. You want to close in a prayer? Would you like to do the prayer? Well, in true Lutheran fashion, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Great God, you, you put abundance in our life beyond measure, and, and we don't know what to do with infinity oftentimes. Uh, we we want to compartmentalize things, we want to make sense of things, and uh, your mystery of love is always beyond fully holding, holding. But at the same time, you've come into the world in the person of Jesus, which, which means that you are also finite. We can grasp grace, we can join you in this world and what it means to be your love for all. So God, we give you thanks for all who serve in our community, all um, who are looking out for the gaps in our community. And God, help us to, to see the gaps in our own life and how we can lean on each other to, to fill in those and support those as we walk forward. We give you thanks for the council this year. We give you thanks for you of our congregation. We give you thanks for holding us together and calling us together each and every week to be strengthened by your word, to be strengthened by your meal to go out and be your body in the Highland Lakes and beyond. 